G'day fellas, welcome back to another video. If you haven't already seen the video where I've gone through the most recent preview build and taken a look at all the changes, I encourage you to go watch that. It's a bit of a long watch, so you know, make sure you grab a beer before you do go watch. I think it's about 90 minutes. Uh, but in this video, we're gonna be going over what changes I would make at the moment or what balance changes I think need to happen. Because if I'm honest with you guys, balance right now is really good. It is in a great state. The only thing that we really need to worry about is how the Hausa and That's Ethiopia. And they've been stopped. But speaking of someone who can't be stopped, it's the big man, Iron Boyd. Great to see you here. Welcome. If you're not familiar with Iron Boyd, make sure you check him out. He's a fellow Australian, streams a lot of Age of Mythology. I'll leave a link in the description to below. So let's get into it. Welcome, 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 everyone over from the Age of Amp or the Age of Mythology community. We're going to be doing a video uh, where we're taking a look at the changes that I would be making to the civilizations at the moment. So. I think that the Aztecs, honestly, have been improved significantly with this buff. So much so that I think they're going to become S tier. So, to be honest, I'm just going to leave Aztec. I'm not going to change it. So, no change. I think the exact same for British. The only reason why we don't see a lot of British at the moment... Uh, British equals British. British equals no change. The only reason why we don't see a lot of British at the moment is just simply because of Ethiopian Hausa and how strong they are. Brits actually counter them quite well. I think Brits are in a really good place. So I don't think any changes needed for them either. China are a civilization which are somewhat similar to Aztec in that people think that they are underwhelming. But when they get into the hands of people like Mito, you can actually see the, the power that really they wield. And my only real concern is with their age up ability. And the fact that they're kind of a bit slow to age up. So the one way that I would potentially look at maybe changing China would be to add 50 food to their starting crates. That would be it. When it comes to Dutch, I think they are a little bit too strong at the moment. And once again, I think it might come uh, with their start. Hey, I would like to see... I got something to report to you. I'd like to see Comrade Commissar coming back for the seventh month. And that's exactly what I've seen. Welcome back, Comrade Commissar. Very good to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Uh, so I'm going to do... Uh, uh, for Dutch, I would do something like minus, minus 50 food. It, it would be something small but just to slow them down that little bit. I think they've already had a number of nerfs recently that have sort of targeted their early game. Um, the other thing that you could potentially do is revert um, revert the coin mining change. So they had this thing where they improved the gather rate for Dutch settlers so that the Dutch settlers were gathering coins slightly faster than what they were gathering before. So for anybody unfamiliar, Dutch settlers gather coin faster than all other civilizations because their villages cost coin and they buff that up even more. So you could revert that potentially. I'm not sure exactly how much of an impact that would have, but at the moment, Dutch, t Dutch are, with the exception of maybe the British, one of the strongest civs, and obviously I'm not talking about the African civs because both of those civilizations at the moment, incredibly strong. Uh, so I, I think that's potentially it. Ethiopia, we're not going to talk about because obviously they've been changed extensively here. We're going to have to see how they play out. When it comes to France, I think the France are in a pretty good spot as well. One of the things to note though with France is they don't seem to be getting quite a lot of games at the high level. At least from what I've seen at the moment. They don't seem, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of them. So it, th we could look at, at further changes. But honestly, when it comes to like the balance that I'm thinking of and the way that I want it to be uh, worked out, it, it, to me, it just seems like early game is really where the focus is and changing the tempo of civilizations affects th their place in the meta significantly. So for France, I feel like I kind of just want to leave them, even though I feel like they're not really getting picked a lot. And it's, it's kind of the same with Germans as well. I think that these are civilizations that, you know, we, we haven't seen a lot of them recently. It's because a number of the best players have, have left. You know, Kaiser Klein, who was famous for playing France and Germans, he's left. Samwise, who was famous for his French, he's left. So it, it's kind of like you don't really have those big proponents of those civilizations there to, to really push forward the strength of the civilization and develop that, that meta for the civilization. So I think it's one of those things that really... You got to be careful with changing. The next thing it comes... Uh, the next civilization is the Inca. Inca are another one where it's like it's a little bit touchy because you play with their numbers and you're just going to make them incredibly strong in the early game. I don't think we've ever seen a time where Inca have been overpowered. They've been gimmicky, 
but they've never been like particularly overpowered. I think that there, there could probably be a world where you could potentially see a buff. But again, I don't really know exactly what they would look like. I think that for the Inca, their mid game is very strong. Their Cancha house could potentially use a buff. Uh, they, they've had a number of changes recently. So maybe it could be something like just a minus five wood nerf, uh, wood buff. Something like this. Uh, so that could be the way that it goes. Uh, when we take a look at the next civilization, so that is India. I think India are in a good spot. They're very flexible when it comes to the things that they can do. India are uh, one of those civilizations where you never really know what they're going to do, especially if it's like a water map with TPs. It's like, what type of India are you really going to get? Um, and so they've always got that flexibility. But at the same time, it can obviously a little bit be a little bit harder towards the late game. I know that they've received buffs in the late game recently. In I think it was about two or three patches ago, they received butch, uh, buffs for the Sepoy, if I remember correctly, increasing their Imperial Sepoys from 50 to 60%. Big Hazard AoE in the chat right now, one of the best players in the game, asking, what's up, Drongo Lord? We are doing a... We've just gone through the recent um, public update uh, sort of patch notes, which are tentative. And I'm going through and basically looking at what I would want added or what I would want changed at the moment. Because in my opinion, I think balance right now is very good with the exception of the African sieves. Now, it's difficult for me to say that when you haven't really seen a lot outside of the African civilizations. So I'm talking about what I'd like to see changed. And I think at, so far, you know, for the Aztecs, the British, the French and the Germans, I wouldn't want a change there. I think for the Dutch they could probably use a food nerf. I think for the China, a very small food buff in the beginning. Uh, also for the Dutch, potentially look at reverting the coin mining change. I'm not sure if you remember that. And now we've moved on to India because I think that India are quite strong. As I was talking about before, Mekarunga, Mekarunga. <laughs> Indeed, Mekarunga. Uh, so yeah, now we're talking about India. Uh, I think that they're, they're quite strong. One of the potential things that you could do is look at reducing the cost of um, certain techs at their consulate. So things like the four vills from the Ottomans. I think it's already pretty strong, that technology. So it's it's kind of, you know, you want to be very careful with the way that you play with balance. we got, oh my God, we've got Mido in the chat as well. Two absolute titans of Age of Empires. In fact, number one and number two uh, in the, the most recent tournament. So very, very blessed we feel at the moment to have them... Uh, to have them here with us. I, I feel like I've almost been put on the spot a little bit here having them in here because it's like, you know, you got the two best players in the game that are, uh, are sitting here watching like, do you dare make those changes? Kevela Tag coming in. Subscribe to this man. He deserves it. Oh, Smiley face. Kevela Tag, you're too sweet. Thank you very much for the eight months, Kevela Tag. Good to see you back here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, So yeah, I think for India, at, at this point in time, I would probably say no buff. I, I would say no change, rather. Uh, I Obviously, they don't need to nerf. I think they're in an absolutely fine spot. Uh, for Eero, I, th I think their water has been n not necessarily over-nerfed, but I think it's definitely something to watch. If I remember correctly, the last dock change went from like... It, the build time of the dock went from like 10 seconds up to 40 seconds. So potentially, you could just look at reducing that dock uh, build time with the wagon from like 40 seconds uh, to 30 seconds. But just because, keep in mind, okay, when you have... So, when they changed the dock, so uh, I'm going to bring out the notepad once again. Uh, so, a different notepad. I've, I've got this notepad here, but then I've, I've got another notepad, uh, which is going to be used for uh, for discussing more, more uh, relevant things. But, like, let's say, as an example, your dock takes 10 seconds to build, okay? And they change it to 40 seconds to build. That puts you 30 seconds behind on everything, okay? And if you're 30 seconds behind, then that means that you're 30 seconds behind on absolutely everything. So that means if you train a fishing boat, so you're going to train four fishing boats, so four fishing boat as the Haudenosaunee, then you're a total of 120 seconds behind. And a fishing boat gathers at 0.7... Is it 0.75? I think it's 0.75 food a second. Big Mito in the chat has confirmed that the food gather rate is 0.67, which is the same as berries. So then we can take that 120 seconds uh, and times it uh, by 
0.67 and we get 80.4 food. So that means that you are down 80.4 food compared to what you used to be. So when they nerfed the dock speed, they nerfed you with 80.4 food. But in addition to that, they also nerfed your tempo. So that, that's 80.4 food from the very beginning of the game. So it is, um, it's, it's one of those things that could definitely look at uh, look to be changed uh, just to sort of help them out on those water maps. But once again, it, it comes back to seeing or to being one of those things where it's like we haven't really seen enough of it at the moment to really make a judgment about it. Uh, the, ne the next one would be Japan. Now, Japan is another civilization. It's received a lot of buffs, a lot of changes. Most recently, it had the shrine, um, it, the shrines reduced in health. Uh, which definitely looks to get a lot more people out on the map, burning down those shrines. So things like these Aztec um, Puma Spearmans that have been buffed up, it's going to help them out a lot. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what changes I would like to see with Japan, just really because I don't know where they sit at the moment. I, th I think it's probably best just to go with no change, especially with a civilization like Japan. I if anything, I would be thinking about potentially uh, Im improving their strength rather than reducing it, but we'd have to wait and see. The next civilization is the Lakota. Lakota, I definitely think at the moment, are a little bit underwhelming. It comes, if anything, more to the economic side. When you when you think about the Lakota, they are definitely a civilization that starts strong, but they always seem to fall off towards the mid and late game. It depends on the way that you play them, but I don't think for the Lakota, a plus 50 food or... A minus 50 food is something that's going to be able to effectively balance them. I feel like it's something like you're going to have to look at certain cards. There's going to be a certain economic upgrades that you're going to need to do or, or changes, but it, it's it's something that I would probably need to consult a few more high level Lakota players, people like Keister, uh, people like Fitzbro, you know, the really sort of cream of the crop and try and get their understanding about what they think is wrong with Lakota and try and identify that. And then how you would go about fixing that but th they would definitely be on the weaker side at the moment i i would suspect um and the the same for the ottomans to be fair the ottomans are a civilization that i've actually seen quite a fair bit um but they do also seem to be on the weaker side and so th they oh, they obviously have a quite a strong tempo so it's, it's almost like the similar uh, a, a similar thing to the lakota in that they are quite strong in the early game but they do fall off towards that mid towards that late game uh, so it could even be something like it, it, it's it's a, a weird thing but like reducing the cost or training time of town centers like j just this one thing could really help them out so as an example if, if you were to take the ottomans or even just lock this behind their millet system so for anybody unfamiliar the millet system is a technology that the ottomans have available to them in the mosque it reduces the time that it takes for villagers to train they also have uh I, I can't remember exactly what it's called i think it's called like the zmat or the mizat um technologies and it also uh increases the amount of uh villagers that you can train so what you know i'm just throwing it out there what if the millet system also reduced the train time or the uh, construction time for town center by five seconds you know just a small amount not not anything huge okay millet system also reduced the construction time for by two seconds and then the other one check this out the one that increases your town center limit or increases your villager limit make it so it increases the town center limit as well how, how's that for how is that for a creative change right there boom boom throw that one out there that's that's a potential option uh, for the ottomans i don't know whether that would fix them but it would definitely make them a little bit more competitive it would make the build uh a little bit stronger as well you know just increasing the construction time by five seconds you know it's, it's probably not even a big thing maybe like reduce the cost as well um you know it, it, it's 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 one of those things where it's like you could even look at changing that improve that you know 
put it from 10 seconds up to 15, uh, 15 seconds. Something like that. Make it more meaningful because, like, typically, if, you're, if you've got the millet system, you're probably only going to have, like, one or two of these upgrades. You're not going to have all three of the upgrades. So it, it, it's important, important for it to be meaningful. Um, when it comes to Portugal, once again, I, I'm not sure exactly how they fall at the moment. I've seen Don Artie playing them. Uh, I don't actually know the outcome of his game. Uh, I see Sensei in the chat saying, range 14 gens, 4.5 speed, and a two times multiplayer to cav in range attack. That sounds familiar, Sensei. Where where do I know that from? Where do I know that from? Make Spahi trainable at the fort. Boom, great buff. On <laughs> Honestly, Raider, so many people have asked for that and like wanted that. I don't know why they haven't done that. Or like give them a card. It's like, Six, or like the um, like eight hundred food, three spahi. Train f spahi from fort. Like something like that. <laughs> but the, the problem is they would be broken as fuck, dude. They're so good. You, what do they cost? They're they're like three hundred food, right? It would be. 400 food. Yes, yeah, see, 400 food. Like, oh, I mean, that's still pretty expensive. And it's not like they can't be counted. They're a good unit. No, nah, you know, you got to go 400. You, you can't mix it. You can't go to 280 food, 120 gold. No, nah, it's, it's got to, like, the design is like, it costs food. All the shipments cost food. It is a, it, it would be food cost only. It would, like, it has to be. Like, that, that's the whole thing. Millet system should increase the XP rate from the mosque to fix the Ottoman TP dependency, says Zita Zadu. Zita Zuta. Interesting idea. I, I definitely think that, like, the, because the thing is, right, with the Ottomans, you want to take... You don't want to give them any more power in the early game, okay? You want to motivate them, you want to promote them, or you, you want to motivate them to have a stronger presence in the mid game. In, in my opinion. And I, I, I think one of the ways to do that is through the millet system. It's an upgrade. Now, obviously, you can get that upgrade at the very beginning of the game. And that would be a great way to, to subsidize your XP. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to how that would work. Bits93 saying, Abus train from barracks. Boom, job done. Go home. <laughs> that would make them so busted, dude. You can't do that. You can't. Actually, Otto needs cheap skirmisher. Maybe Berber skirmishers, like in campaign. What about that card? I, I don't know. Like we're, we're kind of like just throwing... Uh, at this point, I'm throwing plates of spaghetti against the wall and just seeing what sticks. You know the card that the Janissaries get in H4 that reduces their cost? What if that also applied to Abus guns? That'd be kind of bastard though, wouldn't it? That'd be pretty damn good, actually. That'd be way too good. Forget I mentioned anything. <laughs> They're too expensive. Like you reduce their cost down, it's just gonna it's gonna be insane. Uh the Nizam. I don't think they would ever be trainable. Like the the design would prevent it. One of the things to remember is like a, a lot of people will, will post suggestions. It's important to remember that when it comes to aspects of units, developers typically aren't going to change the <laughs> gel cell saying, okay, implementing it now, drunk. Thanks, gels. <clears throat> typically, developers aren't going to change the like the philosophical design of a unit. And like the Ashigaru, as an example, has 4.5 movement speed. And people have been asking for it to have its movement speed reduced for years, dude. It's like they are never going to standardize the Ashigaru ever. It is always going to be fast. It's always going to be pretty. It's always going to be number one. It's like, that is just simply the design element. Like, the, the design philosophy behind the unit. Yet they made Lakota Cav slower. True, they made it slower, but they didn't make it the slowest. Uh, it, like, it, it's still the fastest cavalry in the game. Ashes used to be faster. What are they at the moment? Aren't they, are they 4.5 or 4.25 at the moment? 
They will always be faster, though. That's the thing. Like, they will never be standardized. Uh, so let's talk about changes for Portugal. Yeah, Ashley is 4.5. No, they, they, will never, they will never slower than that, or never faster. They've always been 4.5. Um, so for Portugal, it's... I think Portugal at the moment, it's hard to gauge their strength. On, on land maps with TPs, I still think they're quite strong. But I, I think that, if anything, they're probably on the weaker side in general. But I don't know whether that would mean, you know, giving them plus 50 food again. I can't remember. The, the What are their starting resources at the moment? Did, did they get 50 food and 50 wood taken off them? I can't remember exactly. I, I don't think they start... Do they start with 200 wood? If they start with 200 wood... I remember that being the issue. I, I I would need to double check exactly what they like. It's been so long since I played ports, but my suspicion is that they're on the weaker side at the moment. But once again, it, it would it would just be like this is how good the balance is at the moment. Like when the only changes that I'm suggesting are literally like fifty food at the beginning of the game here or there. Like it, it, you can tell like how good the balance is right now uh, for Russia. I'm curious what you guys think about the new Russia changes. Obviously, Russian changes have been out for a while now. People have still said that Russia is still feeling quite weak. Are you guys in agreement? Is that, is that it? It made no difference. Still needs to be buffed. They get crushed in rush. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to know. My suspicion is that like, when it comes to Russia, okay, th this buff was designed to obviously reduce their strength in the early game, but improve it towards the mid game, which is something like a common theme that you can see is happening here, where we're taking away the one dimensional nature of a civilization and trying to make it more in line, not, not necessarily standardizing it, but ma allowing it to be played more in the mid game, I think is the important thing. Uh, Fitzbro saying Russia is not weak right now, FYI. Curious, curious. Um, th the reason why is because it's like every game you go against a Russia, a, a Russia player, you know you can expect five Cossacks and ten Strelitz in your base at five minutes ten. Every single game. But when they made this change, it was like, well, hold on a minute. Now other strategies are becoming more viable. This strategy has become less viable. They've, they've pushed away from that and now... They're, they're pushing towards it. Snooper in the chat saying, give 10 Blockhouse Pop back. Could work. Could work. It was something that they did in the past. But then again, you're motivating that early game. And the idea is typically you'd, you want to be moting, pushing it back towards um, the third age. It is ideally where you want things to be happening. Uh, obviously, you know, oh, th there's a meta and I have a bias that, that is here. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people that would say, you know, as soon as we get to the second age, we want to see fighting and, you know, prolonged fighting and, and Russia do that really well. But there's a part of me that thinks that you know, the, the changes right now for Russia really lean themselves towards being quite strong in the Fortress Age and booming. It's just we really haven't seen a lot of that play evolve. For me, one of the things that has always stuck out for Russia is their Tsar cannons. So Tsar as in like this. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So for anybody unfamiliar, Russia get two heavy cannons in the standard shipment, but they also get two SAR cannons, which are heavy cannons. It's a second shipment that they get of heavy cannons in H4. So one of the things that I would like to see for Russia to at least promote them more to think about the third age would actually be to give them a second shipment of two Falconets. So that doesn't mean making their card a 2x. So, you know, like as an example, the Japanese get to send their cards twice. That would actually mean giving them a second card of two Falconets. So they would have two, two Falconet cards in their deck in age three. I see Harrison in the chat, obviously not happy. I'm, I'm curious exactly why you think that is, but I, I, I think that Russia... I mean, I think that something like that would definitely be, you know, in line with their with their design elements. 
Bits93 saying, send four Falconets in H3, defend them with H2 muskets. Great. It's it's yes and no, because if, as an example, if you go up against a Russia player who hits H3, you can almost be certain that they would send two sets of Falconets. But then that just incentivizes you even, even more to create an artillery foundry and to deal with that through culverins. And so it's it's even though obviously every if I told you, oh, you're playing the French, what if I told you you can have a second shipment of of two falconets? Harrison saying there's the echo again. Oh my god. Ah <sighs> that is infuriating, man. Like obviously if I told you you could have a second shipment of two falconets, you're not gonna say no. But at the same time, it would make a it would also make the civilization predictable as well with regard to its fortress age play in that you could expect a Russia player to be going down that route of making or of sending two falconets back to back. This time the mic quality got worse. Hmm. It's yeah, I I will have to reformat my computer. Uh, the ne the next time I stream I will have a new reformatted computer. Uh, ideally I wanted to wait until my cases came, but uh it definitely seems that that is not going to be able to be the case yeah so i i would be like move like sar cannons get moved to age three change from heavies to falcs you know something like that and then it would become a lot more relevant because at the moment the sar cannon isn't relevant at all i'm curious is the sar cannon based on something oh it's like an actual fucking bombard dude but you can see like Hold on. Oh my god. I'm terrible. It, it looks like a great bombard. But obviously it doesn't send great bombards. It sends heavy cannons. So I still don't think that there's anything wrong with just sending falconets. Fuck, that thing is huge though, dude. Holy shit. Look at the size of that. Can you imagine? Oh, Johnny died. How did he die? He had his... He had his left fucking torso removed. How? A SAR cannon hit him. <laughs> Look at that thing, dude. Can you imagine that? It would just take out lines and lines of men and all of their legs. It's ridiculous. One heavy in H3. <laughs> no, 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 don't do it, Jels. Don't do it, please. Oh my god. PC building stream with power tools. <laughs> Harrison, that is a... That is a very deep and insider meme, and you will not say that meme again. I don't remember what you're talking about. It's a cannon inside a Kremlin in Moscow. Isn't that cannon one of the visual customizations of the Russian home city? Yeah, it probably is, Zagarath. I wouldn't be surprised. Who needs their left torso anyway? Yeah, exactly. There's nothing important over there. What do you got, like a kidney? A lung? It's nothing too crazy. Yeah, I, like, I, th I think for Russia, the idea is that you would want to move them away from that age two play because I don't want every Russia player to feel like they need to have strelitz and Cossacks in my base at 5 minutes 15 every single game. Otherwise, they're not winning or they're not competitive or that's the only way that they could potentially win. I feel like I, they need to be able to have a more diverse set of strategies. And how do you enable Russia to have a more diverse set of strategies? Well, one of the ways is to give it more or give settlers as an example a reduced training time which is what they did so that gives them a little bit more uh you know leverage towards booming down the strelet pop to 0 0.75 i don't think that would ever happen harrison saying to be fair i've got to recommend a british nerf i don't i don't know if i agree with that minus 50 wood they start with 300 wood. Two manas. Well, mana cost 135. Is it 135 or 125? I think it's 135 right now. No, no, I, I, I no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's 135. Yeah, no, I don't think there's any way you could do that. Minus 50 wood. Then they couldn't start two mana houses without chopping. If they don't chop, they don't get up at 406. I don't get up at 406. I don't get the 700 wood out. No, it would ruin them. No, you can't. No. 
classic Dutch main balance suggestions. True. Yeah. The, you could do 50 food, but you couldn't do 50 wood, man. That would kill them. That would fucking kill them. Uh, how about bank cost increase to three, 375 wood, 375 food? No, nah, once again, it's one of those things. That is that is not the lever that you want to be pulling, I don't think. Uh, can we please get no H2 scares for Dutch, please? Fuck it, man. Let's just... I love those YouTube comments that are like, just delete the civilization. <laughs> like, in what world do you think it's appropriate to be like, you know what? We invested 1,346 hours in this civilization, but we've determined the best course of action is to delete the civilization. Like, why are you wasting your breath? Like, stop it. Japan could be deleted. Fuck, get out of here, Harrison. Delete you in a minute, mate. God. All right, what's the next civ? Spain. Spain is strong. Spain are really strong. Uh, the logistician got nerfed. That was the right play. ATP Spain is still very strong though. And it doesn't need logistician. I think Spain probably on the stronger side at the moment. Before Africa hit. Spain were S tier. Spain, Brits, Dutch and Sweden were all top tier civs. So that was... And then, then it changed to Portugal, rather. I, I totally forgot. Then it was Portugal, Portugal, Spain, and Sweden. That came that came in after. And that, that felt like it lasted forever, man. God, that felt like it lasted so long. Um, sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> oh, that's so... <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. <laughs> oh, you know what? This, this is why we're deleting... J Here's why we're deleting Japan. The sunk cost fallacy. Spain were S tier before logistician buff, and they were S plus tier afterwards. Yeah, yeah, they were quite strong. It's it's probably, I kind of feel like Spain, if anything, probably need to be like de incentivizes or disincentivized from going fortress so often, because they're kind of they're almost the same as like the the same way that, um, like Russia as a civilization is kind of forced to play h2 spain is forced to play h3 but by the same token i'm not sure how much you can really do to stop that from happening just because like they've nerfed things like um in addition to nerfing the logistician they also nerfed spanish gold it wasn't by a huge amount but it was a reasonable amount so i think that's something that we need to be cognizant of <sighs> I, I think it's going to be one of those things that we we need to see, like, no change on. Uh, they don't have no fast age up. That's their dissuasion. <laughs> Can you imagine if they had Exiled Prince? How busted they would be? Oh, my lord. Don't delete... Hold on. i got to read this. Hold on. Don't delete Japan. Just nerf them to unplayable. <laughs> oh my god oh you guys all right uh sweden this is obviously one that's close to my heart and if i'm genuinely honest with you guys i haven't played sweden nearly enough to be able to give you an accurate assessment of where they currently sit in the meta i've spoken to a number of people who genuinely believe that sweden is still quite strong that sweden still actually sits at the top um, and that just the standard build uh, with no dominions. So you go three vills, 700 wood, ironworks, blueberries uh, is still very strong. But that's on the condition that you don't have to send leathers. Because the issue is if you do need to send leathers, typically in the early game, you're going to be very stretched for food. And so one of the things is that people have been aging up with the philosopher prince to mitigate how much food they were losing but then by going up with the philosopher prince then you're losing those two villages and there's a whole raft of like fallout that occurs from sweden because you got to remember that with sweden before they were kind of like a supernova and what i mean by that is that they like they burn all their energy really quickly and they just went boom and now they've kind of like been brought back in their boom is still strong it's just it doesn't burn as fast it burnt very quickly before. Payman95 saying, Hey mate, Groovy Notepad. Thanks, Payman. I'm glad that you liked it. It's uh, a... <laughs> it's, uh, it's very, very nice, isn't it? It's... Uh, yes. It's it's one of my favorites. Black Notepad. I, uh, I'm a big fan of it. So, 
it's it's one thing to consider, but like Dominions has been nerfed significantly, right? Like you are absolutely laughing if you think that when I say laughing, like you're you're laughing at me, or you're you're, you're kidding yourself if you think the ten percent HP buff is going to prevent your torps from going down. Like sure, it might prevent one in a thousand torps going down, but it's it's not really going to help. Not considering that they lost. You know, they already lost how much HP? They went from 1,500 down to 1,200 HP or something like that? 1,600 down to 1,200? It, it was a big nerf. Maybe not that big, like 16 to 1,300, maybe? It, it was a lot. Uh, so, it's... Yeah, it's one of those things. Um, I, I, at the moment, it, it's... I, I don't have enough information. And... Me not having enough information would also be the same as no change at the moment. They obviously haven't been complained about because we've got Hauser and Ethiopia in here. Uh, but the United States would be next. And like, when it comes to... Sorry, I don't even know why I mentioned the United States. The Ethiopia and Hauser have been so oppressive that people don't even see like... You know, it's Sweden may be the lesser of two evils at the moment. Uh, and we don't really know. When it comes to the United States... The United States need a redesign. This is the big thing. They need a redesign. And redesign is an ambiguous term. You could look at France and be like, we're going to redesign them and just remove the Curacia. Or you can be like, we're going to redesign them and remove the Cura de Bois. Like, it, there's different things. What do I mean by redesign? I mean, the states need to be updated. Need to be updated, need to be amended. Virginia General Assembly is way too strong. And when I mean too strong, I mean that if you don't take VGA... You're done. Oh, sorry, Virginia. The General Assembly. Uh, Virginia. Just Virginia, the age up state, is too strong. Uh, so, if you don't take Virginia, you are really hurting yourself as a United States player. Now, that's not to say that you can't play with other states. Uh, Philadelphia is a... Is, is it Philadelphia or Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania are a strong state to age up with as well. But the problem is, and I, I I hate standardization, okay? I really don't like standardization. I want things to be different. But the consequence of things being different is that if one thing is better than something else because of its difference, then everything else kind of gets left behind. And that's exactly what we have at the moment with the age two United States states. So we have two that provide wagons, uh, sorry, two that provide a uh, tower wagon. Two provide a um, a barracks wagon. Or a, uh, a military wagon. I if I remember correctly, hold on. Uh, do I have to load up, like, hold on. Let me just get my archive of stuff up here. Archive. United States. Age ups. Commerce age. Okay, so... Yeah, you have one military wagon, one military wagon, one outpost wagon, one outpost wagon. And then you've got crates of 200 food in the middle. So I think Delaware are fine that the way that they are uh, with regard to design. When it comes to Pennsylvania, and I, as I said, I know, I hate this, I hate this. Give Pennsylvania and Rhode Island a military wagon instead of an outpost wagon. And that immediately makes both of them viable. A lot more viable. Like, Massachusetts was was meta for a while. You, you would age up and you would send Plymouth Settlers as, like, your first card. And it wasn't terrible. Obviously, it's got nothing on VGA. But, like, I, I feel like that is... Hold on. Will Drongo actually play a game of AoE? <laughs> Don't even bother on that prediction. I, I can already tell you guys what it's going to be. That's, that, that's, a good, that's a good poll, though. That's a good poll. I'm I'm curious. I'm curious how that's going to work out for you guys. Wait, is it, is that a poll or is that that's a prediction? That's a prediction. So yeah, I, I feel like Virginia needs to be nerfed to make it like not as strong. But then at the same time, they need to improve, like increase viability of other states, and whether that means making them more attractive to age three play or not. Uh, link to the patch notes? Yeah, let me hook you up. You'll have to log into Steam to get those ones. Um, 
Oh, <laughs> look at all the fucking points right now. Will Drongo play a game of AoE 3? And it's... <laughs> look at you guys betting all those points. For anybody playing at home wondering what we're talking about right now, I think it must be Harrison that's put up this, uh, this little prediction. So uh, over on Twitch, you've got an option to... It's kind of like betting. And people get points for watching. Okay, so you've, you've got these little points called Drongo Berries. And, you know, every minute you watch, you get a point or something like that. And they don't really, they don't do anything. They're just like a cool little fun way to play uh, uh, around. I mean, you, technically, yes, they do do things. Like if you've got uh, 250,000 points, then you can pick my civilization or 100,000. Well, I'll analyze your replay. And uh, you can see that people are betting right now on whether I will play a game of Age of Empires 3. And, uh, <laughs> oh... It's, uh, look, it's, it's pretty good, uh, it's, it's pretty good odds at the moment if you're voting yes. Paymon95 saying, just resub for three months. Oh, you, did you really, Paymon? Where is it? I don't see it. Hold on, let me, let me pull it up. Oh, you, you might need to share it still. Uh, what are your thoughts on hearing Farsi in Age of Empires 4? Oh my god, Paymon, I was so excited to hear Farsi in, pay, in, uh, AoE 4. I, I loaded up the game. Oh, I don't know how much I can say. Oh. Oh, okay. Do you remember there was a video? The Indians were fighting against the Abbasids. And everybody was really upset that the Abbasids were speaking Farsi. It turns out it wasn't the Abbasids speaking Farsi. It was the Indians that were speaking Farsi. I was like, that was awesome, man. It was, it was really, really cool. It was so weird, though, to hear them speaking it. Like, combined with, like, just the... Yeah, like a, a lot. I, obviously, NDA, I can't say a lot, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it, it's cool. It's really cool. It's really, really good. Um, all right, let's, uh, let, let's continue on. I, I guess there's not much more to say with regard to the United States. They need to increase the viability of other states uh, in age two. And so whether that means making it more viable for age three is uh, one of those things. And the, the problem is, okay, so much work has gone into the USA that like, I don't really want to change the design of these cards. Like Fertile Lowlands, Delaware Blues, these are all based on real things. Like Plymouth Settlers, Boston Tea Party, these are all real things. And so I, I wouldn't want to change them. But what I would want is, is to try and make them more attractive so that when you as a player are looking at playing the United States, which option am I going to go with? Because at the moment, every single time it's Virginia that you're going with, right? And it doesn't seem fair to the other states for you to always be going up with Virginia. So how do we make Delaware more attractive? Okay, maybe if, if you're going to make Delaware more attractive, like it, it's hard. Like, how do you do it? This is already such a good card, right? Ship six semi-fattened cows and two homestead wagons. Gains 200 food crates. What if you made that crates of 200 wood? You make it crates of 200 wood. Now it's kind of as good as a military wagon. Obviously, it's not as good. It doesn't build itself. You have to gather it. But hey, that's still something. Okay, so there that's one way that you could do it. Okay. Uh, Harrison saying, The thing is, linking cards to age ups actually restricts strategy instead of opening it, it up. Like, you can't really go water with USA. Really good points. 100% Harrison. So let's make it so that if it is a water map and you want to go water, that you don't feel like you have to go Virginia. And if, as an example, okay, if you got a military wagon instead of an outpost wagon, well, now it doesn't feel so bad. And one of the things I've talked about before with Slater Textile Mill is that normally you send schooners in the transition, whereas Slater Textile Mill, you have to send it before or after you age up. So how about let's treat this card as an age two schooners and make the discount even greater than what it already is. Because if I remember correctly, it like brings settlers down from 100 down to 60 and fishing boats down from 70 to 50 or something like that. Big payment. Love you. Oh, big payment coming through. Very, very sweet of you. Thank you very much, payment 95. <laughs> there we go. Love you. Love you too, mate. Love you too. Just play pr France. Problem solved. True. I will never not do a double take hearing schooners in AoE 3. <laughs> very, very true. Yes. 
I love a good couple schooners down at the pub. Uh, Gel Cell saying, yeah, that's all balance and not design issues. Yeah. I, I guess, like, when I said redesign... Remember, I, that was, it's kind of like, it, it's, an, it's an ambiguous term. It's an ambiguous term. Uh, yes, it, I don't think it needs to be redesigned. It needs to be rebalanced. And, you know, if Rhode Island... You know, okay, let's say I'm playing the United States on California. I'm up against Sweden. I want to open with water. Do I go Rhode Island? No, I go Virginia Company. Why? Because I get military wagon. I get Virginia General Assembly so that when I age up, I get this awesome shipment. And then if I'm ever in trouble, I send Culpepper Minuteman and I get 18 Minuteman instantly. Okay. Great. I never even bothered with this. Why, why did I not bother with this? Because the cards in here aren't attractive to me. And because the bonus that I got from aging up is, in my opinion, almost useless. Don't get me wrong. An outpost wagon obviously has a use. It's a shipment point. It's a defensive structure. But in realistic games where I need to be out on the map, say, sieging down torps or shrines or applying pressure, a military wagon is going to provide me significantly more options. So my suggestion is put military wagons in here as a very bare minimum. And then Rhode Island in particular needs to be looked at. Whether that means that settlers and fishing boats are significantly cheaper, and I'm talking like really reduce that down, and because one of the things, as I said, you got to remember, you send schooners in the transition period for all the other fish booming civilizations, and then when you get to age two, you can send your new shipment. Whereas here, instead of sending 700 wood, you're sending Slater Textile Mill, which is going to reduce your fishing boat cost. So you really need to make me want to ship this card because right now I don't want to ship it. I want to send other things before I want to send this. And that's the problem. Harrison says, probably nerf Virginia as your gameplay around a single age up is pretty one dimensional at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if you're talking about me specifically or just in general with that, but yeah. Tower is good for water defense though. I agree with you 100%. The tower is good for water defense, but if I want a tower, I will make a tower. It doesn't incentivize me to go that. I, I, I don't want to use the road up island age up. Even if I was going to go water, I wouldn't use Rhode Island. Um, I feel like Pennsylvania is the only one you could probably get away with it not being it because it's it's th these bonuses are already very good. Uh, it, you know what? If, if you made it so that this was a military wagon, you would genuinely see people going like, tossing up between virginia and pennsylvania because pennsylvania it's like kind of a bit more like stay in age two you know send your your tamani festival really get like your natives going uh you know you get your five cree coeur de bois you send a meeting house you get a, the equivalent of a bank um it, when it comes to the the trickle like it, this is pretty good right versus culpepper minutemen and vga which isn't that good oh another thing that i want to do for the, the uh, united states united states oh, i need to put this in right now uh united states um Move, move the um the thing in my body. What's it called? The let me put that up like that so it's more even. Uh, move the capital to age two. So currently it's in age three, which means that if you don't go up with Virginia General Assembly, you can't build the capital until age three, which means that you can't do a fast age up until you go to age four. So in my opinion, it needs to go to age two. And also one of the things that you could do to further reduce the cost of, or sorry, to further reduce reliability on Virginia is actually make it so that the, um, the state capital, so move state capital to age two, State capital now costs 200 wood. There you go. Now we're, now we're cooking with gas. Now it's not looking so strong. Now it's not looking so strong. You do that. But then, then you kind of make this look a little bit stronger. So now it's like... so. But th then, okay, uh, if that's looking strong, then you reduce the trickle from Philadelphia Convention. You know, like there, there are ways that you can deal with this. The thing is, like, you just got to make it so that people aren't always aging up with only Virginia. That, in my opinion, is what you need to do with the United States. Uh, anyway, those, those are the changes that I would like to see made. As you can see at the moment, not a lot of these changes are... Um, or a lot of the civilizations I don't recommend a change for 
mainly because we we don't have enough data because of how strong Ethiopia and Hausa have been. Some of the civilizations we do have enough data for because we knew from before that they weren't strong enough or they were too strong, like the Dutch. We knew that the Dutch were too strong, so a small nerf is in order. Uh, civilizations like the Ottoman or uh, or Russia, we know they are too weak. So there are other buffs uh, that we can talk about. But once again, this has been another long form video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this a little bit of different uh, style um, for YouTube. And I'm sure that there's probably people wondering in that little prediction, uh, you know, which way was it going to go? Was Drongo going to play a game on stream or not? And we get to choose the outcome of that. And we get to choose it while we're doing this YouTube video. So I'll tell you guys now, the outcome is no. Drongo will not actually play a game of Age of Empires 3 because I'm going to bed. Thank you guys for watching on YouTube. I'll catch you guys in the next one.